Welcome back everyone. Today we are talking about deflections of beams once again, this time using the moment area method. The moment area method is based on the fact that the moment is equal to EI times the curvature. And the curvature being the second derivative of the displacement, I should be able to find that displacement using double integration. Now, if we don't really wanna deal with integration, but we'd rather just deal with areas, we can do that instead. So if we take the first integral, that's going to tell us something about the slope of our beam. So let's just take this beam, let's deflect it some distance due to load P. And I'm going to look at the slope at the two sides. Here's the slope or rotation at A, and then also at B. And if I wanna look at the change in that slope between B and A, I would just look at the integral under my curvature diagram. So the curvature is just given by your moment diagram divided by EI and I'm integrating from A to B over DX. Now the same concept applies when we're looking at displacements, but we can't just say a displacement straight out because we're gonna get some constants of integration out of that and we don't know what those constants are without solving for them. So instead we get a deviation from a tangent. So to explain what that means, let's consider a tangent line at point A. So it's tangent to my deflected shape and the deviation from that tangent would be the distance to my beam from that tangent. So let's call this distance P B slash A, where that re represents the deviation from my tangent at location B, where the tangent is drawn starting at A. So if we evaluate this, we could represent this with double integration, but it's more convenient to represent it as a moment of an area. So we'll take once again an integral from A to B, and then I'm going to multiply it by the distance, the horizontal distance from location B, that's where we're looking, multiplied by the curvature, which is going to be M over EI dx. Now this may, equation may look a little bit funny, but really there's just two terms going on here. This is an area under a moment diagram divided by EI so that we can change that to curvature. And XB is going to be a distance to the centroid. So that's going to set us up for being able to calculate areas and centroids for a variety of shapes. So just to sketch out the most common shapes that we'll see, we'll see generally speaking triangles and parabolas where the parabola can either open up or open down. So if we look at the area of these three shapes, my area for a triangle is of course one half base times height. For this first parabola, it is going to be two thirds base times height. And for the parabola that opens up, it is going to be one third base times height. Next, if I want to look at the centroid of that section, we'll have a centroid for each of those sections and let's call that distance X bar for each case. And if I solve for X bar for the triangle, it's going to be one third times the base. For this first parabola, it is going to be three eighths times the base. And for our final parabola, that is one quarter times the base. So these are a couple of the most useful areas and moments of areas that we're going to use throughout this calculation. So let's dive into a couple example problems. For our first example, let's consider the same beam that we had just considered, but now with some numbers attached. So it is a 30 foot long beam with a 20 kip force applied at about 60% across the span. I have a modulus of 29,000 KSI, so this is typical of steel, and I have a moment of inertia of 600 inches to the fourth. Now, the first thing that we need to do, as always, is solve for the reactions and get the moment diagram for this. So if I solve for equilibrium, I'll find that my reaction at A is eight kips up, and my reaction at B is 12 kips up. And if I draw the moment diagram for this section, it looks like these two triangles that come together, where the peak is 144 kip feet. Now I'm gonna divide this area into two separate triangles where this first triangle, one half base times height area is going to be 1296. And then my second triangle has an area of 864. I'm also going to want to find the centroids of these triangles. And so the centroid is going to be one third of the base distance from the vertical. So in this case, our centroid are going to be right here and here. So one third of this base distance is four feet over and one third of this base distance is six feet over that way. Next thing that we'll do is we will draw the displaced shape for the structure. So I know it's gonna displace downwards 
and I'm going to draw a tangent at one of my sides. And so I'll choose the side A just because it's a little bit simpler. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the deviations to the tangent that I need to calculate my displacement. The displacement I want to calculate is here at location C, so we'll call that delta C. So it seems logical that I'm also going to need my deviation from my tangent at that same location. So this distance right here, we'll call this T C at A. And once again, that represents the deviation from the tangent at point C where that tangent is drawn starting at A. Now that's a good start, but it doesn't actually give me enough information. The next thing I need to know is what is the total height of this triangle here? So in order to do that, I'm going to need to use similar triangles and I can draw a similar triangle by doing the deviation to my tangent right here at my other support because I know I have zero displacement at that location. So therefore I have a triangle with a base of 30. It has a height of TBA. And once I get that, then I can use similar triangles to find my displacement at C. So applying that, we'll see with a similar triangle, I have TBA with a base of 30 feet is going to be equal to the height of that triangle, which is delta C plus TCA, and that has a base of 18 feet. So solving for my displacement, I see that this is going to be 0 0.6 times TBA minus TCA. So therefore I need to calculate two deviations from a tangent, TBA and TCA, in order to calculate my displacement at location C. So let's apply moment area to find those deviations of the tangent. So here we'll have EI times TBA, we'll get that one first, and this is equal to two areas. So I'm integrating all the way from A to B. So I have two areas here, I have one triangle and I have a second triangle. And I need to find the areas of those triangles, which I already have, and the moment arm to those triangles. And that moment arm is evaluated about your point of interest, so that's point B. And so I'm going to be measuring this distance here for my first triangle, and this distance here for my second triangle. So for the first triangle, I have an area of 1296, and that total distance is going to be 12 feet right there, plus another six, so that's 18 feet. And then I'm going to add on my next area is 864. And the distance to that centroid from here is going to be eight feet. So 12 minus four feet. So evaluating that we find this is three zero two four zero. Now the units for that are going to be kip feet cubed. The reason for the units is that this area here technically has units of kip feet for the height and feet for the base. So that's kip feet squared. And then my moment arm also has units of feet. So I end up with kip feet cubed. If I repeat this process, then for CA, when I'm looking at CA, I'm integrating from A to C. So I only have one triangle for this case. And the area of that triangle is 1296. And then I need the moment arm to the centroid of that point, which we can see is six feet as given right here. So that's six feet. And then evaluating this, it's 7776 hip feet cubed. Now all I need to do is plug these values in so I can see that EI times my displacement at C is going to be 0 0.6 multiplied by 30,240 minus 7776. And this is equal to 10,368. And again, that has units of kip feet cubed. And now I divide by EI to get my displacement. So that is 10,368 kip feet cubed divided by EI. So that's 29,000 KSI. And my moment of inertia is 600 inches to the fourth. And to make sure that my units work out correctly, we'll notice that we have feet cubed in the numerator and inches in the denominator. So I need to convert all three of those feet into inches, so I'll multiply this by 12 inches per foot cubed to find my displacement, which is 1.03 inches. Now that displacement is downwards based on the direction of my deflected shape. So drawing that deflected shape is very, very important when we're doing moment area methods so that we can understand what that direction is and how to consider these tangents properly. 
So let's look at another example where I have some parabolic moment diagrams just to see how that works in practice. For the second example, we have a similar beam, except now done in metric. I have a support at mid-span, and I'm interested in calculating my displacement here at C. So once again, we have to solve our reaction forces first. We'll find that the reaction force at A is 24 kilonewtons down, and at B, it's going to be 72 kilonewtons up. And if I draw the moment diagram for this thing, I have a linear section and then a parabolic section that ends at zero slope. So this peak is going to be negative 192 kilonewton meters. And I can find the area of these two regions where the triangular region to the left here has an area of 768. And then the area of this parabola is going to be one third base times height and one third times eight times a height of 192 is going to be 512 kilonewton meters squared for that unit. Next, I also want to find the centroids of these sections. So there's two centroids right there. Now this distance, because that's a triangle, is one third of the base. So that's eight over three meters. And then this distance is going to be two meters because the centroid for this type of parabola is one quarter of the base. Next, I'm going to sketch my deflected shape. To help us sketch the deflected shape, we can always look at the moment diagram and we see that our moment is negative everywhere, which means it's always gonna curve in this direction. So to make sure that works out, we have to satisfy our boundary conditions. So it starts here, it's gonna curve like that, and then it's going to deflect downward in my cantilever span. So once again, I'm going to draw a tangent at some convenient location. Usually the end of the beam is best, so I'm gonna start a tangent right here at location A. And I'm interested in my displacement at C, so I'm pretty sure I'm gonna need a deviation from my tangent at C, where this distance right here is the actual displacement at delta C. Now the height of this triangle right here is going to be obviously T C A minus delta C. The second deviation that I need to establish my triangle is we'll always have a deviation of a tangent to my second support. And so we'll say that this is T B slash A right here. Using similar triangles, we know that T B A over the base of eight meters is going to be equal to the height of this triangle which is TCA minus my displacement that I'm interested in. So TCA minus delta C divided by the base of that is 16 meters. And so therefore we can find that the displacement at C is equal to TCA minus two times TBA. So now my job is to calculate those two deviations from the tangent. So doing that, we'll see that EI TBA. So we'll start with that one. From A to B, I only have one area that I need to consider. And I can see that the moment arm from B to the centroid of that area is going to be eight thirds meters. So this area is going to be 768 with a moment arm of eight thirds. And that is equal to 2048 with units of kilonewtons meters cubed. Likewise, I'm going to do this for my next deviation from the tangent, which is TCA. We can see that it has two areas. It has the triangular area and the area under this parabola when we're going from A all the way over to C. So for my triangular area, it's 768. The moment arm is eight meters plus eight thirds. So again, that's the distance from here all the way over here. And then if I consider my parabola area, it's 512 and that moment arm is eight minus two meters, which is six meters. And evaluating that, this is 11264, again, kilonewton meters cubed. Now, substituting these two values into my expression for the displacement, we can see that E times I times delta C is going to be TCA, which is 11264 minus two times EBA, which is 2048. And that is going to be equal to 7168, again, with units of kilonewton meters cubed. Now, dividing by EI to find my actual displacement, displacement at C is 7168 kilonewton meters cubed, divided by E is 200 gigapascals. Now, a gigapascal is just a kilonewton per millimeter squared. So this is 200 kilonewtons per square millimeter. And then my moment of inertia is 
2.5 times 10 to the 8th millimeters to the 4th. And because I have meters in the numerator and millimeters in the denominator, I'm going to cancel all those meters by multiplying the top here by 1,000 millimeters per meter cubed. So that gets rid of all three of my meters. So evaluating that result, we find this is 143 millimeters, which in reality is a rather large displacement, but we have perhaps a relatively small section and cantilevers tend to have a lot of displacement anyway. So to summarize the moment area method, it's really all about similar triangles. So we oftentimes need to find a deviation from our tangent at the location where we're interested in finding displacement. We'll compare that to the deviation of a tangent where we have a known displacement. So that's often at one of our other support conditions. And then we can use that to solve for the displacement at any location. The only other case that comes up quite often, which we won't consider an example here because it's actually a very simple case, is if you know your tangent is a horizontal line. And that will always happen if, for example, you have a fixed end, the tangent there is just gonna be the horizontal line. And in which case this method directly gives you displacements. So it's quite useful. So I hope you learned something as always. Please subscribe and I will see you next time.